Hola amigas! I'm gonna be recreating my glam from this past weekend right here. I'm gonna go in with the Milk Primer. This is the Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. I was not very intrigued by a matte primer because I've tried the e.l.f. one and I feel like that doesn't work very good with my skin. I don't know what's in this, but I feel like it works really good and I am definitely gonna buy a full-size one. I usually don't use a primer, but I have noticed that lately I've been pretty oily and this has really been helping with like controlling shine and it just doesn't feel like any other primer I've ever tried. It just like melts into the skin. My skin's been changing so much, especially during the summer I get a little bit more oily. But yeah, definitely recommend that if you are a combination oily skin girly. I'm gonna do some underpainting. I really like the Stay Naked Correcting Concealer on it. I'm going in with this Lancome concealer that I got sent to me. Tint Edel Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. Um, I see that it's two different colors, but trust me, I just really like how this blends together. I really will leave this to dry as much as it can because Guess what? My eyelids are also really oily, or like my eye area can be oily. I'm going in with a brand that I'm no longer supporting. This is in the shade Always Sunny, but I have this much left of product to use. I think that a good dupe for that is the Wet n Wild um, Contour Stick. It's also like much, much cheaper, maybe like $20 cheaper. And the shade that most complements that is Where's Walnut. This is the one that I will continue to repurchase because it's affordable. And honestly, I think it's better than this one. This one's it's a little too thick, like the consistency of it, and before I feel like it would melt a little bit better, but working with it, it hasn't been the most blendable, as is a little bit more of her other stuff is just like not working with my skin anymore, so yeah, but I am the type of person that's going to keep using whatever product I have until it's done. Um, because I'm not gonna waste product. Anyway, I'm gonna go in with a small tapering brush just to blend all that in. I'm gonna do that before I blend out my concealer, so I'll be back. Real quick, this is what I'm talking about, is uh, it looks very muddy, um, and so one of the things that I would do is actually brush the contour stick itself to blend this out, and it honestly came out a lot better, but the fact that I have to work a little bit <laughs> more with the product um, is just like a little annoying because it is a, a higher end product and you, you're paying a little bit more but it does take it is a little bit drying and so it's not as creamy as the wet n wild um, so I'm gonna stick to that or if I find another one so I wanted to say that the best tip to doing your makeup is to make sure that you have good lighting I was doing this exact makeup look back in my hometown and so I don't have the best lighting in my um, room back home so I always go to the window to try to get natural lighting because I feel like natural lighting is the best um, but sometimes we don't have access to that but yeah I kept going back and forth to the window to make sure that it looked good and honestly I could tell you that I didn't expect it to come out as good as it did. I'm going in with the Real Techniques concealer brush. I really like this because it's pretty thick. We blended out my concealer. It doesn't look crusty, so I like it. Now I'm gonna do the base, and for the base, I have the Lancome Tint Edel Ultra Wear Care Glow. I think this is a matte. I don't remember if it was matte or not, but this is in the shade 330 N. Just pump a little. On. I love the pump, but I will have to say I don't like how this smells. It smells like I don't know. I, I just don't like how it smells. It smells like a little chemical chemo, chemically, but this is what I used as my base of whatever is left and I'm gonna put it on my chin or under my chin I'm not very graceful when I do my makeup sometimes, so um, this is as good as it's gonna get. And yeah, I just love how this matches me so so well. I used to always wear like warm tones, and I'm not warm, and I'm not super cool. I'm in the middle, hence why I am 
a neutral undertone. I mentioned before, I'm not promoting this brand, but this is the shade Happy, and the highlight is Transcend, in case you're wondering about the shade. Honestly, I'm just showing y'all all this so you can use whatever you have in your kit to recreate this or practice creating a look like this. But like I said, I think it's just my skin has also changed and I am not the biggest fan of these liquid blushes anymore because my face is just a little bit more oily. So I'm gonna let that sit for a second before I go in. Let me go ahead and just blend this out. I can't blend this out too, too much because then it'll start lifting. And I've tried many things to try to get it to not do that and then just leave it alone because if I keep doing it, it's gonna start lifting. I think the color is still there, but unfortunately I still want more color. I think that's kind of where you could see some of the lifting is coming up. Um, and I have to blend this one down because the color. I do work it into the lid a little bit just because I like a little bit of flush there. I'm going to go in with my e.l.f. powder, which once I'm done with this, I'm going to get the Huda Beauty powder. I've heard so many good things about it and I just want to try something new. So we're going to set everything where the concealer was at. Still getting oily after this. But baking does make a difference. In my T-zone, my nose, my chin. The other day when I was doing this, I did add more of that contour stick right here. I'm not gonna do that now just cause I don't have time to blend it all out, but you're welcome to do that or follow it up with a bronzer before you bake it like this. Or like a powder bronzer might be best. And it's usually what I do, I just didn't pack one that day, so that's why I went back in with the cream. Um, usually I don't like doing that. I did put a little bit of powder on my eyelids because, like I said, I have oily eyelids. It just helps set it for when I do some of the eyeshadow later. And then I just take on a big fluffy brush, um, some of that powder to set any of the foundation that's on my neck. While we're letting all that powder bake, some powder blush on top of the cream blush, I am using um, Warm Soul by MAC and it's a mineralized powder. I've been loving this powder just on its own because it is like a nude flush rose um, and it just looks so natural and I, I think this is also what's gotten me away from the liquid blush because I just love how beautiful this looks it doesn't look chalky it looks like there's some kind of you know shimmer flex in there and it just makes it look so airbrushed and beautiful and I think that's what really adds to the blush um, again you could use any type of cream blush under it but this is gonna set it and make it look just so yummy I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the eyes and again, I'm just letting this base as much as it can. This is the- oh my god, that just fell. Anyway, this is the Billion Dollar Beauty Box um, and I love it because it reminds me of like the early 2016 Z palette um, and they come out with all these different little pans that you could put in here. This is a standalone. This is actually- this is a Natasha Denona shadow that I got as a sample from Sephora like a while ago um but it is a nice like transition shade um again like i said on saturday i was not thinking about what i was packing so i just took that and i was like if i need any eyeshadow that's that i don't need to bring another eyeshadow palette and i usually do bring like at least one or two eyeshadow palettes and i just was not thinking i was trying to pack light you could see this is a really nice transition shade any classic glam you need a nice shimmer and this moon palette has all of the shimmers i went in with the cosmic space dust which went ahead and put that all over the outside of the eye because it kind of matches that transition shade and then after that i'm going to go in with space cowboy which is this beautiful like rose gold shimmer if you ever see me wear any type of glitter lately, it's been Space Cowboy. And as you can see, the different colors right there, this is what's going on the center lid. And then I just put it everywhere there. You see how it has like some depth to it. Again, you don't have to use these products. You could use something that's similar. Next, I'm going to go in with the Space 
Cowgirl, which is that white uh, pearlescent shadow. And this is something that I've always done is like white in the inner corner. I saw this in a magazine when I was younger. And if you look at some of my photos, I always have some type of very white <laughs> like inner corner because I thought that's what you had to do. And look at, look at this, I'm still doing it. I do work it up to kind of like blend in. It's a little bit of fallout, but honestly it's not excessive to the amount that a lot of other glitters are um and that's another reason why we left our powder on to bake so next i'm gonna go back into that natasha denona shade that we used as our transition i'm gonna put this under the lash line just to add a little bit of smokiness i'm gonna do my eyebrows all i did was fill it in with the kosa brow pop nano it has a spoolie and it has the very tiny mechanical pencil like tip and it works wonders it looks really beautiful and then i topped it off with the benefit brow wax i keep the highlight for last but i can't keep the secret i've been using the anastasia amarizi highlight because look how much i have left like i'm not gonna not use that and it is the when i first bought it i actually bought this back in 2018 i was kind of late in the game but i was just like mm, i mean it's fine i have better highlights and now this is the highlight that i'm always using um i constantly am sanitizing it because i don't want it to break me out or me having to throw it out because the product is contaminated and you can't buy this anywhere anymore because it's not sold anymore. Last time I checked, but if it is, let me know. Best highlight out there. I remember I forgot to add some highlight under my brow bone. Do a wing eyeliner with my tried and true Essence Super Precise Eyeliner. That is the eyeliner, not perfect, but that's as close as I'm gonna get it to perfect for now. So I'm gonna go in with the Sils Booster XL by Lancome, which is a nice mascara primer. Um, first, I would um, curl my eyelashes just so that it can get a nice hold. Do the primer, then I'd go in with the Buxom mascara or any mascara that I have on hand. But this is what I used on Saturday. And then I was wearing these half lashes by Ioni, which are from the Dollar Tree. But you can always just grab any pair of lashes and make them into a half lash and I put them right there. They still have glue from Saturday. I'm gonna go in with MAC Cork. Do you overline them. I'm gonna go in with lipstick and this is in the shade Humble and it is it just like a nice nude mauve matte. This is supposed to be matte, but it does kind of get into my fine lines on my lips. So I go in with the Nearly Petal Gloss, but any kind of nude gloss will do. This is essentially everything that I used, minus the lashes and the mascara and the brows. But that is the look, and I still have some glowiness, even though this is a mostly matte base. This is to the T the routine that I used, and like I said, I know it looks like full glam beat, but I feel like it's pretty simple and anybody could do it. But I think I did my eyeliner better than I did on Saturday. Don't mind Bridgerton in the back either. <laughs> but I think I did my eyeliner a lot better because I was in a rush. That's everything, my loves. Hope you like it. Let me know what else you'd like to see and I'll see you in the next one.